ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and welcome to the next episode of Up Close and Personal, uh, presented to you by CQ Magazine. Now, every once in a while, we do present different recordings, audio recordings of certain speeches, perhaps, or a Q&A session conducted by professionals in different fields. Today, however, we are very lucky to have someone with us who has agreed to spend a certain amount of time, uh, perhaps maybe half an hour or so, to talk about his projects, right? And to, uh, with that in mind, I would like to introduce everyone to Mr. Wahyu Figura, who is involved with a particular organization, I would say, called yeah. Dr. Digital. Yep. Wahyu, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello, everyone. All right. Yeah. How are you doing, Wahyu? I'm good. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's get down to it. What is Dr. Digital? To someone who is not particularly aware of this particular mm -hmm. service, what is it? Uh, we can probably guess what it sound from, yeah. from, what, from the name, yeah. but all the same, can you explain to those who do not know? Of this okay. organization. Basically, Dr. Digital is an entity that aims to answer any health-related questions. Mm -hmm. Basically, it starts from a site, mm -hmm. and on that site, we prepare, we provide a lot of health or medical directories, such such as a doctor directories, mm -hmm. disease directories, or maybe drugs database. And it also has some QA features, which you can ask directly to our partners who are doctors as well mm -hmm. and also we have some symptom checkers so you could check what about your pain mm. about what you have felt, felt like this right okay it sounds like a very interesting yep. type of service and it certainly sounds very useful mm -hmm. but nevertheless let's take it back right to the very start mm -hmm. how did this idea come about well to be frank I was approached by my friend back then in mm -hmm. 2012 uh, he said he told me that at that time there is still a huge gap between the demand of any health and medical information mm -hmm. with the health content provider, mm -hmm. and that's where Doctor Digital actually could fail at the gap. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to hop onto the project mm -hmm. and do this. Actually, in the context of this project, what mm -hmm. is your role? Uh, I'm actually one of the co-founders, and currently I'm the acting CEO of Doctor Digital. Right, yeah. and on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, for yeah. perhaps for those who are not entirely sure what the CEO of such an entity would do on a day-to-day -day uh, basis, what is it that you do actually? We track the number of traffics, the daily traffics. Mm -hmm. We always update uh, a lot of new information, such as new articles mm -hmm. or maybe a new social media post, mm -hmm. and also answering some questions related to medical uh, questions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I need to go to our partners and basically introduce them to what Dr. Digital is. Mm, okay. Now, when you say traffic, of course, I'm assuming yeah. that you're not actually talking about the traffic jam that occurs ah, on a day-to-day -day basis in Jakarta. You're talking more about the stream of visitors yeah, to your yeah, website, yeah. to your Twitter account, perhaps to your Instagram account. Mm -hmm. uh, how important in this particular case, how important uh, is social media to you? It is really important, I think, mm -hmm. because in the media industry, you need to span big to reach a certain amount of traction. Mm -hmm. And that's why a huge media such as Compass or The Take, mm -hmm. they spend a lot of money to uh, attract a number of visitors to the site. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the other hand, we are a startup here, so mm -hmm. we, have, we don't have that many of resources. Mm -hmm. And that's why we decided to use social media because it is far less cheap, cheaper compared to the conventional way. Mm -hmm. So that's why we create a unique content and post it on our Instagram, which is uh, being well recepted mm, okay. with our audience. Yes. Talking about the reception from your target audience, mm -hmm. what what has it been like? Uh, did it uh, has it gotten to the point where you, you feel like you've met your expectations or do you feel like you have some way to go before this is something that you're satisfied with in terms of the reception? Mm. I think we could have done more 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we are on the right path. We are on the right track currently mm-hmm. because uh, on Instagram we have about 50k followers, mm. and our unique visual content usually attract hundreds or maybe thousands of likes. Mm-hmm. But we plan to go beyond that social media. We mm. want to actually uh, deliver a credible and also useful information to the other people. Yeah. But what about the medical industry? What has their reception been like to a service like Doctor Digital? Uh, it is related actually between the younger doctors mm-hmm. and the more senior doctors, mm-hmm. because the younger doctors actually understand uh, about the importance of being there on digital. I think they they are aware about reaching audience more than the real life, mm-hmm. but. You need to use more social media as well, mm-hmm. but the senior doctors uh, doesn't see it uh, as quite important. Mm. So that's why we decided to focus on the younger doctors first mm. because it also can be beneficial to mm. them. Right. So perhaps from the younger doctors, those who are more social media savvy, those who are more in tune with the needs of the younger generation, they. Uh, have reacted positively. Yeah. You mentioned some of the more seasoned professionals, those mm-hmm. who have more experience perhaps from a previous generation. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that they did not really see the value of this. What Has that actually literally been the response? Uh, what, do they say that they don't like you? or uh, what, 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 How did they express this, uh, this uh, lack of interest, if you will? Uh, not, not as far as don't like us, but Actually, because this the seniors doctors actually uh, have to handle so many patients at once mm-hmm. during their during their daily routines. Mm-hmm. So, I think they are already overwhelmed by the amount of patients that need they that they need to handle. Mm-hmm. At the same time, the younger doctors need to practice mm-hmm. need to uh, have a lot of conversation with their potential mm. patients. Mm. That's where Dr. Jital could help the young, could help the younger doctors because we uh, act as a bridge between the patients and the younger doctors. Yes, absolutely. Like your tagline says pintar yeah. sebelum ke doctor. So that's yeah. actually a very good way of synthesizing what your business and what the entity is all about. Yeah. In this case though, uh, those who actually need to know more about their ailments, about their perhaps their sickness and whatnot, mm-hmm. is this a group of people that already exists? As mm-hmm. in, are you actually creating a new market, so to mm-hmm. speak, a group of people of, of uh, you know, they have the means, they have, they are connected, but they don't really have uh, the way in which to actually connect with doctors on a more personal basis like this as well. Are you creating a new market or are you tapping into an existing group of people? It's kind of both actually mm-hmm. because currently our main target audience is between 25 to 35 years mm-hmm. old. And why is that? Because at that age, they already quite aware of the importance of health and maintaining the condition of the body. Mm-hmm. And they also have the power to spend for himself they don't have to rely on their parents anymore mm-hmm. and but at the same time uh, they don't want to take an extra effort to to me to meet a doctor because sometimes the process is quite it's a bit of hassle you know mm-hmm. you need to go to the hospital you you wait in line and sometimes it takes a lot a lot of time and mm-hmm. then you only talk with the doctors for Maybe ten minutes. Yeah. At the same time, you can actually find the information that you are looking for in the internet. I think. Mm. That's actually a very good point. Mm-hmm. Having said that, something you mentioned earlier about the older doctors or the more experienced and seasoned professionals, mm-hmm. they are not interested in this because they get a lot of patients coming through who mm-hmm. wants to meet them mm-hmm. and discuss with them about certain things. Wouldn't this put the younger doctors in a similar position? I understand the need to get more experience, of course, mm-hmm. but this also means that the younger doctors who make themselves available for through Doctor Digital to the public, mm-hmm. 
they also become inundated with a lot of people who suddenly come in and say, look, doc, I have this, or doc, I have that, you know, what, what should I do? Within that, kind of reduce, in a way, the quality of the advice given to these people, especially since mm-hmm. the doctor does not know them personally. You know, the doctor cannot yeah. see them yeah. face-to-face, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, how does this affect the okay. delivery of, of quality advice to the public? Okay, first, uh, through this digital service, mm-hmm. the doctors could actually answer any questions from anywhere. Mm-hmm. So it could talk less time compared to you have being there physically. Mm. And secondly, I think the questions that are asked to them is not that deep. Sometimes people ask um, uh, basic questions such as, I have uh, an itch in my skin, what mm. should I do? Mm. There's there's so few questions actually which ask about a lot a more serious topics. Mm. And when that happens, when someone actually asks about more serious topics, mm. we always recommend them to actually visit the doctors. Mm. So based on our statistic, a lot of the questions actually uh, about the general general health condition. Actually. Right, okay. So some of the easier things yeah. perhaps that can be dealt with simply by going to the pharmacist and, yeah, and exactly. buying a certain type of medicine perhaps. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a lot more questions to ask Mr. Wahi Figura, but we're going to take a short break right now. So don't go away for too long, and uh, we'll see you soon after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with uh, another bunch of questions that we have prepared to ask uh, Mr. Wahyu Figura with. Wahyu is, of course, from Dr. Digital, and he's been talking to us about the services they offer. I do wonder, though, Wahyu, Mm -hmm. about the Indonesian scene, at least. Uh, How do you fit in with the rest of your competitors? Are there any other services out there that offer something similar or identical to what ACA are doing? If so, what is it that differentiates you from the rest of the field? What makes you special, basically? Okay. Uh, currently, there are quite a few that mm-hmm. actually provide similar services to us. Mm-hmm. And what I would say the difference between us and the others is how we deliver the information. Mm-hmm. We, uh, uh, we, def- we develop the site so the visitors could browse through the information easily. We pay attention to the user experience. Mm-hmm. And also we are quite active on social media and we utilize the power of visual to convey our information. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's it. All right. Okay, that's actually a very good way of putting it because certainly the social media community here in Indonesia, as I mentioned to you off the record just now, mm-hmm. is pretty crazy. Yeah. You have one of, if not the biggest groups of people in the world, for example, who use Facebook and Twitter. If I'm not mistaken, the biggest population of Facebook users in any geographic nation in the world, uh, that particular biggest group, uh, you can find them in Indonesia. And the second biggest group uh, of uh, Twitter users are also uh, Indonesians. So what is it about social media in general and as a whole, perhaps, that makes it so attractive to Indonesians. Ah, maybe basically because Indonesians love to comment on things, mm-hmm. but most of them are too shy to actually voice it on real life. That's why they use the platform to actually voice it mm. in digital. And also I think uh, this is because a lot of smartphone users in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I read a couple of days ago that smartphones actually contribute 125 percent compared to our entire population so we mm-hmm. have around 318 million smartphones so right there's now. more smartphones in indonesia than there are indonesians yes. 
exactly. itself. <laughs> exactly. Why is that? What? What? Why is that? Because uh, smartphones are quite affordable in mm -hmm. Indonesia, thanks to Androids. Mm -hmm. Not thanks to Apple, of course, because it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of us actually have two phones at the same time. Mm. I don't know why. Uh, a couple of my friends always have both of the Apples and the Androids. I don't mm -hmm. know why, but it happens here in Indonesia. Right. When you mentioned that, I'm actually reminded of a friend of mine when I was working with him in Malaysia, we worked on a particular account and mm -hmm. he had, the, he's basically the owner of this company that deals with advertising and video mm -hmm. content for mm -hmm. a number of different clients. Mm -hmm. And some of them included the different telecommunication companies. Mm -hmm. So in Malaysia, you have someone like Maxis and Cellcom and mm -hmm. DG. So all these telecommunication companies are, and possible and, and were at the very least at that time, his clients. Mm -hmm. He would actually have different phones catering to these different numbers because he believed that it's actually good business practice uh, to use yeah. a DG yeah. phone line when he's dealing with the DG telecommunication yeah. company. Is is that could that help to explain a bit as to why people are so crazy about smartphones and, and the social media way here in Indonesia? Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing or could I be completely off the mark here? I think it's quite similar with what you have said that mm -hmm. because uh, we have three or four major providers in Indonesia mm -hmm. and a lot of them actually yeah, they have different tariffs for different provider and that's why a lot of Indonesian actually use more than one numbers right well that is very interesting yep. and if you consider the fact that at least in the context of the bigger picture mm -hmm. There's a huge digital gap yep. between those who are wired mm -hmm. and connected to the internet on a day-to-day mm -hmm. -day basis mm -hmm. and those who are not. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I had to look at a recent report prepared by the uh, World Economic Forum, I believe. Mm -hmm. The report, the Global Information Technology Report of 2015, the, they have this thing called the Network Readiness Index, which essentially measure, measures the digital infrastructure of a country as a whole. Indonesia is placed 79th yeah. out of 143 countries analyzed in this particular context. Is Indonesia too big as a country to fulfill its potential in this way? Well, sadly I think so. Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of ground to be covered. And so I think it will take a lot of time for us to increase that readiness index, actually. Mm -hmm. Of course, the government already took the initiative to, uh, by working with their internet provider. Mm -hmm. And they also announced that they plan to make internets available on rural, uh, on rural areas. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it will take a lot of time. Because uh, before we are talking about a smartphone and it's not that hard to set up the infrastructure mm -hmm. but when you are talking about the cable of the the internet providers by through the broadband I mm -hmm. think it's far harder to set up the infrastructure I think. Mm -hmm. okay so a lot of this we will have to wait at least for the foreseeable future yeah. on the government and see how they can come up with ways to overcome this particular issue mm -hmm. Uh, linking it back to the delivery of medical advice mm -hmm. through social media and the internet. Could this be something that also helps to overcome the shortage of doctors and medical practitioners mm -hmm. in the country? I mentioned this because, again, looking up at numbers from the World Bank, they did a survey a number of years ago that indicated there are only 0.2 physicians available per 1,000 people in Indonesia. At around the same time, Singapore has two physicians available per 1,000 people. And Vietnam, you might say Singapore is a bit too small and whatnot, yeah. but Vietnam, also a fairly big country, 90 million people there, they have at least 1.2 uh, physicians for every 1,000 people in the year 2013. Mm -hmm. Does this affect how you see 
the role of Dr. Digital in a way? Is it, does it become a, not so much just a business thing, but a social thing as well to overcome issues like shortage, uh, shortages of doctors and medical practitioners? And I think before we take a look at those numbers, we mm. need to see first what the patients need to do before they are able to seek the medical advices. Mm. Uh, in U.S., for example, they need to uh, set up an appointment with GP first, and mm -hmm. sometimes it will take days for them. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, in Indonesia, unless you use our national coverage, uh, or what we call BPJS, mm -hmm. you can go directly to specialists. You I don't see. need to go through the GP. Mm. The other issue that we have here, apart from the ratio doctor mm -hmm. to patient, is that the doctors do not spread evenly on national scale. Mm -hmm. So some of them are centered in big cities, mm -hmm. but on more rural areas, you mm -hmm. could barely see a doctor there. Mm -hmm. So as a patient, your experience on medical service will be very different depending on how rich you are and where do you live. Mm -hmm. And that's where Doctor Digital or maybe other similar services actually could contribute by helping the role of doctors, mm. by giving them the access to reach doctors and asking questions, and by providing medical information with internet access. Right. And more importantly, by focusing on how we can prevent people from being sick and keep them healthy. So we are focusing on the preventive aspect rather than the curative. Right. Okay, well, that will certainly save a lot more money mm -hmm. in the bigger picture because prevention is always, at least in this context, yeah. better than the cure. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, that's about uh, it uh, for this part of Up Close and Personal. Mm -hmm. We're going to take another break, final one, before we return for the third part of this episode with Wahi Figura from Dr. Digital. So, don't go away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final part of our interview session with Mr. Wahi Figura from Dr. Digital. Now, this part is actually something that's going to be slightly removed from the first two parts of this interview. What we have done is we've come up with a list of frequently asked questions. I have to admit that the major inspiration for this particular list of questions comes from the Freakonomics Radio podcast. On that particular podcast, they have a tendency of interviewing several figures, academicians, uh, political figures, uh, entrepreneurs every once in a while. And they do ask them a list of questions uh, at some point of that particular interview mm -hmm. that is standard and uniform for one person to another. And to be honest with you, I feel that this is a very interesting set of questions that's not only different from what we've talked about before, but also fun. Yeah. And hopefully, if you, ladies and gentlemen, and our esteemed listeners who are checking out this episode now, if you weren't all that interested in the medical stuff we just talked about previously, hopefully there'll be something here for you too. All right? So I'm going to start with the first question. What's the wisest investment you've made thus far in your life? I don't know where it is the best investment in my life, but... I think I decided to purchase a high RAM on my laptop. <laughs> That's it, uh, because I hate lags. Absolutely. Yeah, so I decided to uh, spend an extra for yes. a high RAM, and I think it's pretty payoff for me. I, I have to agree with you. Sometimes <laughs> when we purchase electronic devices, yeah. the RAM is not really something that we think about. Uh, certainly not for, for many people. Oh, the priority is always given to something like the hard disk space yeah. and perhaps the, uh, well, primarily just the hard disk space, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, so I think this is something that's uh, worthy for greater consideration uh, to other people as well. What do you use the extra RAM for, by the way? Uh, because I used to design a bit. Mm -hmm. So that's where I use software like 
Photoshop or maybe uh, Final Cut Pro mm. and that's where it starts to lack if you have limited RAM. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the best advice you've received from someone? My father always says this all the time. Uh, he said, no pain, no gain. And it really sticks up with me. It, it makes me keep doing what I'm doing right now, uh, running a startup. Because in Indonesia, the conventional way to, to earn a living is by working uh, in some company. Hmm. And I'm here uh, starting my own company and it's it's really tough. It's really tough. Sometimes I I didn't have monthly salary, but I think it could pay off in the future. That's why I keep remembering my dad's advice. All right. Was there a particular moment mm -hmm. in this experience of yours with Dr. Digital mm -hmm. that you wouldn't mind sharing that was particularly painful in a way? Yeah. Uh, as I have said before, the media landscape is really harsh. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to the others, our capital is so limited. Mm -hmm. And that's where we can compete with the giant players. We don't have fixed revenue for our company. And we almost decided to sell this company to the bigger uh, company. Mm -hmm. But then, I don't know why... I got called by a certain brand and they want to do a partnership with us. Mm -hmm. And from then on, uh, the path started to look brighter. I don't know. All right. Yeah. There you go. Uh, at the very least, there is some gain yeah. that is evident for you. Uh, and, and I hope that gain will continue to be bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger in the future. If there is one book you'd implore others to read mm -hmm. any book at all, whether fiction or non-fiction, which book would it be and why? Uh, since I'm into startup, I would recommend Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Mm -hmm. And if you ask why, because there's one phrase that uh, I think really intrigues me. Mm -hmm. He said that competition is for the loser. So, oh. yeah. He, he that's that's that. a big statement. Yeah. He right. said why, that. why did he say that? Uh, I don't know why he said that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm afraid I will misquote what he said. Mm -hmm. But basically, he said, if you run a business, aim for the monopoly. He said that. Mm. So, by writing that, I think he meant for us to create a unique product, not to be mm. a copycat. Ah. Yeah, that's why uh, I always remember that phrase by him. Mm. And actually, the. The way we run our company is by considering his thoughts on that. Wow. Well, that is certainly enlightening. Perhaps yeah. after I'm done with all my football books, that might be something I'll check out in yeah. the future. Yeah. What talent do you always wish you had more of? Well, I wish I have talent more on my time management skills. Mm -hmm. Since I'm a deadliner, I used to do things near to the deadline. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it just gives bothers me. Mm -hmm. then, yeah. All right. What do you most often mm -hmm. lie about? Uh, related to my previous answers, I would often lie about, well, I'm already on my way. Um, I'm nearly there. Five minutes left, I will there. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. But where would you usually be when you say that? Are you actually were you actually on your way? Not yet. I usually just started to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, in a way, you were on the way. Yeah, to the bathroom. to the bathroom. Yeah, so exactly. you're not entirely lying there, yeah. so to speak, right? One item that you have that you cherish and treasure, but the usefulness of this particular item has mm -hmm. outlasted itself, mm -hmm. right? Which is the one item? You should probably throw out, but never will. Uh, it's not one item, actually, but my comic book collection here. Hmm. I think I wouldn't want to throw those away, even though I could actually read it online. Hmm. But so many nostalgic moments from those comic books. That's why I decided to keep them. Wouldn't there be some kind of value in the comic books that we keep from previous years? 
what what would that be like in Indonesia? Does it exist for something like this? It could be, but it's not that many in mm. Indonesia. Mm. Okay, which comic books are you talking about specifically? I'm talking about Doraemon, you know, mm. because Doraemon is really famous in Indonesia. Yeah, uh, it's been airing from since I was uh, since I was five until mm. now. It keeps airing, mm. and <laughs> Nobita stays at his age. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I always enjoy when I read books like. Yeah, you mentioned comic books. I, I was a huge fan, still am to a large extent, yeah. of Doraemon. Apparently, they had this latest film where Doraemon goes off and it's a goodbye edition. Ah, yeah. I, I, I don't even want to watch that <laughs> yeah. because I am not ready. I haven't read Doraemon for years, but I'm not ready to say goodbye to that yeah. little robot cat just yet. So I'm not watching that for a while. And, and the same goes for me as well. I enjoy books like that. There's this one series of books I used to read when I was a young boy. It's called The Hardy Boys. Mm -hmm. And you would read the book from one year to the next, from uh, one series to the other. They will always be 18. Mm -hmm. They will always be just at about the same age. Mm -hmm. And they're always going to be the teenage detectives who would eventually solve cases and whatnot, even when there were certain deaths that mm -hmm. occurred in the context of their friendship. Perhaps one of their friends died in a, in a series, uh, in, a, in a particular book. And then in the next book, that friend would not be around anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's some kind of realism there as well, but the age remains yeah, the same. Yeah. So I find that and now that I look back and I think about it, it's weird. But at the same time, I guess it's kind of frozen in history to a certain extent. So the the nostalgic element comes out even yeah. stronger. So, having said that, I tell you what, I, being a, a very big book man myself, <laughs> okay. I would totally agree with you on that front. Yeah. And I think you should keep your comic books for as long yeah, as possible. Course. Right. The final question, ladies and gentlemen. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I actually read similar questions with this on Reddit. And I skimmed through the answers, and uh, there's one answer that uh, I found really good. All right. Which is the ability to sleep for one minute and woke up fully re-energized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really need it. I really need it. <laughs> just for one minute? <laughs> yeah, it's just for one minute. Right. Why, why this power? Why this ability and, and not anything else? Because usually I having a hard time trying to sleep it makes me having less energy during the day mm -hmm. and that's where the superpower could help me actually right i have to agree <laughs> it does sound like a very useful and practical <laughs> superpower that's brilliant although having said that uh there's a subreddit for this yeah i don't know about the specific subreddits but i read it on the front page the mm -hmm. airframe Mm -hmm. I think it's the Ask Reddit. The Ask Reddit. Okay. You, you could search out for that. Right. Uh, I'm aware of Reddit, and I do use it on a fairly regular basis, yeah. although I only usually just visit the football yeah. part, the back page of the internet. But, you know, even though I, I know of Reddit having a number of different subreddits and a number of different areas, I didn't think <laughs> that there would be a particular discussion about the kind of superpowers you would yeah. like to have on a day-to-day -day basis. And I have to say, it is a brilliant answer. And, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, a brilliant way to finish this interview as well. Uh, Mr. Wahi Figura, thank you very much for your time that you have spent with us here today. Right, We do appreciate it. And uh, to our fellow listeners, thank you as well for having made the time and effort to check out this particular interview. And we will be back uh, not very far away in the future from now so do keep an eye out for keep an ear out as well for the next episode of Up Close and Personal uh, presented to you by CQ Magazine